369 versus Ole. Pick Big up matchup from top top side. Right wrong. I think, I think the rest of the, uh, of the game could be gap. Not sure how good Vampire is. Seems like okay. Nothing special. And mid lane, I'm not sure about Fisher. We have to see. I think this is a big series for EDG. I mean, if EDG gets like a game here, I think it's pretty uh, indicative that they could be a decent team. All right, boys. Top esports EDG. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. First pick Senna for Jackie Love. All right. In in LPL, people pretty much just play Senna Tom Kench. They don't play any of the other Seraphine lanes. So far, we haven't seen like Senna Seraphine much. And in previous splits, when we saw Senna Seraphine, it just hasn't worked in LPL. When we see these really passive bot lanes, they just end up getting dove over and over again, like level two, level three. And I think that LPL players, when they play Seraphine and they play Senna, they lack the ability to, to hold back. They, they lack the ability to not trade. They don't play it optimally. They, they're, they have a problem with passivity, I would say. I'm assuming that's a rel jungle and it will be a counter pick to Tom Kench on uh, three because Tom Kench will be picked here by Mako almost 100%. Yeah, got Tom Kench pick. So what I would see a lot of people do here is actually draft a mid laner because then the enemy team would have to choose between counter picking the support and answering the mid laner. So if you pick something that's like pretty strong here, like Orianna, I think that's generally pretty good. Or Akali, I'm down with that. Yeah, I mean, it's essentially whatever mid laner you want to pick. Okay, so the reason that they do this is because now if you want to answer the Akali with an Akali counter pick, which there's not too many of them, um, then you wouldn't be able to get one of the like super prio picks into Tom Kench. So mainly like Tom Kench, Senna, I think you're kind of looking at like Blitzcrank here a lot of the time. You could also do Enchanters. You could do something like Lulu. I think with this type of comp, it might be more of a Lulu angle. Can you play like poke front to back? Let's see what uh, let's see what top esports bans. But assuming they're gonna ban support here, Rel can obviously be flexed into bot lane, but it's just like okay. There's some answer of Rel into Tom Kench where Rel has shield break on its Q, so that's like kind of nice. But if you think about how Rel trades with Tom Kench, it's actually not that common where you're able to actually save your Q to the point where you can shield break the Tom Kench. Most of the time, you're going to be like engaging with your Q, so kind of like a fake answer. They're going to be a Zin ban, Aatrox ban, okay. I thought Zin ban might be interesting because you have like essentially two range sources of damage makes Zin pretty strong. But it seems like Zin is losing prio right now in LPL, which I think is, is, is actually correct. I, I was talking about this when I was playing solo queue, but I don't actually think Zin is that strong. Like I have really good win rate on Zin, like, but it just doesn't feel that OP to me. Like what feels OP to me right now when I play jungle is brand. Brand just feels like it's up like there's certain champions that i just when i play them i'm like there's something just wrong with this champion i felt like that with like original udir when it was uh first reworked in 2022 like that champion felt really op but it was like obviously banned from worlds and then by the time we got on to the next patch mythic items were changed and it just lost a lot of its value um part of the reason it was so strong was sunfire being an op mythic because Sunfire was an OP Mythic. Also, Sunfire gave you tenacity in the Mythic passive, so you could go Sunfire, Demonic, and you were, like, God mode. Okay, Zin is picked here. I mean, Cassante Rel, like, I mean, it's it's okay. It's okay. Let's see what the answer is top. You could go something like Rumble here. 369 Rumble was not super good, but that's generally an answer to Cassante. Udyr is also fine. Down with the magic damage dealing top lane, like Udyr or Rumble, though. Last pick, JJ Lee Sin. Are they just going to put Sun the Rel bot? I don't know. I think Aphelios Rel will just lose to Sun Atom, though. I'm a little bit scared about that. But Cream Akali, I'm always down for just join why is everyone so skewed towards top esports i mean they're a much better team like on paper right you have essentially double rookies coming in for edg they lost their main shot color and mako who's now on top esports top esports has like pretty top tier player in every single role they have like a top five player in every single role on paper in lpl the draft i think is better here i would rather play a uh, left side draft today's corkies weren't that great yeah corky is never like People played it in LPL when it's really OP, but I don't think it's ever been like a core LPL champion. He's going for the... So you see how their 369 didn't awaken R? If he awaken R's, he pushes the wave too fast. So he's actually even getting better at, at, at Udyr. I mean, he probably just started playing it when Koreans started playing it. So you just get push in every matchup. Like how OP is it to just have push in every single matchup? And he doesn't crash second wave. Uh, did he crash second wave? I think he might have crashed too early. 
he lied. Sad. But his jungler is on this side of the map. His jungler is going to go mid level three. <laughs> okay, this is like TN's strength normally. I said that, uh, Chad was to go against so the, the reason why he's crashing now, too, I guess, is because timing. he's considering Wilbur potentially being ganked. On his top side, and this leaves an angle into what's mid lane. Like, what, what is this, bro? You get his Valkyrie. Is that even worth it, bro? He's level three. Ooh. We actually missed. Jed was like, don't wait. Wait for me, Bali. Well, Bake goes Oh, my God, Vampire. That was really ugly. Uh, Jackie Love maybe needs to wait a little bit longer. To yeah, step Jackie Love, forward, like, like the, uh, Jackie Love, wear, I mean, he got both summoners. Vampire got both Jackie summoners, but the way that he played that was so bad. When can we get a good base? This is actually a decent time to base. He can push this way. Yeah, he's basing. When you use double awaken like that, he's either basing or he's playing for proxy. All about checking in on those uh, those checkpoints as well, and seeing now as well another champion is three six. Yep, playing for proxy. Yep, and this is going to right get him a free recall. He did this a number of times in the previous. There we go, three six nine. There we go. He's not using his awaken because he's not sure where the enemy jungler is. He could have pushed this faster if he used his awaken, but he wasn't sure that enemy jungler was actually here. Playing for another. He's playing for a plate. Like crazy. That's what does, man. This and he saw at least in bot, so now he can just like double R it, if you start get a recall off. Yeah, he didn't see Lee until the Tribush ward, but now he saw him, yeah, obviously. He's dead. Clean. Clean and bot died too. Clean. All right, Tabby's. Now, what I think 369 is going to do is he's going to build Sunfire. What I want him to do is I want him to go bombies into Frozen Heart, but no one is going to do that. Uh, it's clean. And Leave just had to flash it. And with Perma type pro top prio, one of the reasons I really like Uter in general, and why I think it's strong, I've went through it a couple times, but like. Well, one yeah. of the reasons, one of the three main reasons that I always say is like the fact that now there's an objective topside at five minutes when Udyr wins the top lane, like first five minutes against pretty much every single lane in the game is just a huge benefit. Like it makes winning lane for the first five minutes more important than it was already, which I've always thought the champions that win lane are just OP. I know that some people like are like, oh, but you can play something else in scale. I just think that having pressure in league, like it allows you to be the one that creates action most of the time. And unless enemy team has like a quick enough like bridge to get to their scaling or like they have the ability to get to their scaling kind of easily, then I think it's tough. Mako has flash. This is fine. Mako doesn't have to care about this. Two plates already, and Ollie hasn't got to base, and 369 has a free base, which means that Ollie's gonna have to TP here. Like, is this not broken, bro? 369 actually played it well, bro. I'm, I'm th thank God. Keen, I was watching a little bit of LCK on my uh, phone when I woke up, and Keen played it well as well. Thank God the Udyr players are getting better. Like, I think some of the information that people have, I think, is kind of fake info that's going around right right now, where people are like, oh, like Darius and Olaf just counter Udyr. So, like, Udyr is not that good of a blind pick because he has, like, counters. The counters are not actually counters. Like, if you watch the top Udyr one trick in Korean solo queue, the guy that actually put the shit on the map, the reason why all the Koreans started playing it, if you just take Flash Ignite in matchups like that, then you actually still win those lanes. And you shouldn't be afraid to take Flash Ignite on Udyr or Ghost Ignite on Udyr um, when you play these types of lanes, mainly because the enemy who's playing Olaf or Darius is going to be taking Flash Ghost anyway. Like, he's going to be taking Combat Summoners. That's part of the reason why those champions are able to actually beat you. So you just take Combat Summoners as well, and you just don't, like, you just have to stand your ground and fight them. You just go Ignite, uh, you go Ignite, you go Ghost or Flash, depending on preference. I like Flash Ignite. Oh, I might have to ulti here. I'm just saying, Mako still got the move. Get the ulti through the wall. Fight it to Hala. Hala's gonna go all out, try to get out of here. Hala's coming. He's dead. He tried to counter proxy. He's just dead. Uh oh. Oh, Cream has no flash. Never mind. He's not dead. Oh, that's the name of the game. Both ghosts being. I thought Cream would be able to connect there, but he's no boots and no flash. But I mean, either way, that's huge. Like Ollie loses so much tempo from this. He has to base three six nine, or like three six nine is just gonna be able to get plates. Okay, so here, I don't hate the Sheen purchase. I don't hate the Iceborne Gauntlet purchase, and the reason for that is because he took demolish and the matchup is pretty free 
he's able to actually get plates here. He's able to hit the turret, and if you go bombies or you go uh, Bramble, you actually can't hit the turret because the other guy's going to hit you. So I don't mind the Sheen here because it's, it's going to allow him to take pretty much the full turret solo. Yeah, Uter's just proxying in your face, 1v2, and you can't do anything about it. Replace at nine minutes. Also, 369's had TP advantage for the last like three minutes. Oh, vampire falling in his Okay. Oh, and going straight the neck of TS. They can't find it though. Yeah, they didn't burn anything. They burned only ignite there. Game's going so perfectly for Toppy Sports. Yeah, he's gonna get a a fourth plate here. Four plate solo. Yeah, so like he's actually getting sheen value here. A big CS differential on the bottom side. I love this stupid ass champion. Oh, you combine the both. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, whenever I was looking at the gold difference, he has to be a little bit careful right now because of the package. No like flash. Oh, okay. Uh, or no uh, Tom yeah, Kench eat. Get the kick back on the this guy has package, by the way. A little bit scary, but I guess they just won the fight hard enough before Corky was there. Good flash from Jackie Love, dude. Thank God, man. Thank God people are not letting themselves get insect in season 14. Uh, played for, I believe he just dropped that pink ward on the, the Krugs. You just gotta be ready to double W here. Like, yep. Play for the Ws. Like, you, uh, the Cassante can't all in you post six. You gotta be careful to not, like, play too disrespectfully. Thank God, man. Thank God we we early flash. I'm, I'm so sick of seeing like 80 carries not early flash there. I guess that's that. They actually get grubs here. Which kind of sucks. 369 might just TP back top. He has uh, Iceborne, I think. He should have Iceborne. He's got to be really close to it. Yeah, he's got Iceborne completed already. So he just TP's back top. And he can probably whittle down uh, Ale's resources and get Ale's t next TP. Like, I don't think Ale should be able to get like a free TP bot lane or anything. 369 also can take... Um, <laughs> They're he can also play for Demolish Proc and take turret here. Good one, Triforce. I, I, I think that, that the Triforce Titanic Udyr game, like, I don't think that it's something that you never go. I think that that's part of the tech of beating things like Darius and, um, and Olaf. Like, if you have good opportunity to do that based off your team comp, you just play the early game the same way with Ignite and then you take the other stuff. Of everyone else on EDG. Like, one of them should not be, but it doesn't matter because they are going to take the outside tower up here and... Maybe try to take all his life. Right, I mean, he's out. Lightning does do so, and uh, not able to chase. Not as ghost in his ult again, though. They'll take first turret blood there. First turret. Yeah, when Cassante has no um, no ult, there's zero threat. You can play as disrespectful as you want. Oh. As obnoxious as possible. The last of the all out. Use the. I like that. I like putting in the double Q there. Chunk him out. Except for Allah headed down bot. Worth noting, Jackal has 50 stacks as well. It's not a bad timing. Oh, this guy is... Uh, whoa, he needed to... Uh, that was a little crazy how he played it, because he, he should have just, I think, won to Mako there, but I guess this doesn't matter. As team is winning 4v5. We just took the crab. All right, I guess we're hitting top place, or a top uh, tier 2. I don't even think Liam Fisher is safe Hey, they got Liam's ult here for... Moonlight Vigil used to... Really oh, assault? Right Could Ale have played the lane a bit better? Is it supposed to go like that? If it's pure 1v1, on the, then yeah, this is just how it goes. And, and what Udyr players have, have realized yeah, is Cassante is such a free matchup pre-6 that you just take Demolish in this matchup because you can actually play for plating. Like, Cassante doesn't really have any threat on you until level 6. Then at level 6, you just have to make sure that you have your Awaken up when he is ult. You don't like just randomly just trade your Awaken for no reason and start hitting him. Um, and then you just have to like ghost and and try to survive his all in. Survive his all in, then you just go back to shitting on him. What? I don't know, bro. I don't know what's going on, bro. All right, let's see if, if uh, 369 can live here. He has no ghost. I, he's actually killable here. Oh, he, he dodged Q3. I think he's fine. And he's got the, the Infernal Cinders. Honestly, if, if it was a different map, he could actually... Yeah, he could actually uh, die there. That's the timing to kill him. Hey, Sundered Sky right, Gaming. Dude, maybe I gotta try some Sundered Sky um, Zinjao. Because I feel like really Titanic is like, it's this nice. Oh, they got four man here. Okay, wait, hold on. Oh my god! Is Cream gonna actually kill them still? That was a pretty good engage from Vampire. 
Easy does it for top esports. They do lose two members for one, though. It's taken a long time for EDG to get on the board, and honestly, given the state of this game, they will take any victory they can get. Vampire might have gone too far here now. Oh, Cream! Easy. Okay, Pick Cream! Easy. Does it. My One boy! More. Give him two! Give him three! Come on! He's the cream of the crop in the new mid lane. My boy! My he homie! Oh my himself. god, he's on a team! He's not 007. He's all he's grown seven, up, guys. Zero, zero. I can't believe we've been watching this guy's career for almost three years now. He's an assassin. I mean, this has always been like one of Cream's best champions, bro. He's always been the Akali Silas, Kiana guy. I think honestly, JJ has had to leave him to die. You cannot go into this Akali like this, ultimate or no. This was an overstep. Yeah, that Wombo combo is real good until you realize Cream is the only one that didn't get. Dude, Akali energy just seems so. Up to me. Like, are you guys done yet? Oh, can I like obviously it's a blue buff here, but like now doesn't the energy saying, seem way too low in a collie? I think that long, buff that they did was a, a little strange. I don't know. How Tian was trying to knock JJ we'll back, didn't get it. To make sure he can't get hit on the back. Just about missing out on the knock. Oh no, and oh, 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 Cream just going for it. Oh, he he was dead. He's dead to the storm surge proc, and he just leaves him there. All right, bro. Okay. I don't know how much there's going to be left to say for EDG, but Ala has... Yeah, 369 just has to keep on cycling. Like, here, you just... If you keep on autoing, he'll get his second awakening up. Okay, good, Jackalove. Oh, he got sniped. We're going to actually see this replay? Okay, man. Wait, I think the champion is just bad. Folks, it's it's just Udi versus Cassante. They just try and dodge Q3. By the way, like that trade is massively winning for 369. He has to auto here and try to get his W up. It's the only way. Yes, the the only way out is through. Oh, he's just dead. Um, team gets free Baron for this though. But yeah, um, the thing about those types of trades with Udi is like most HP trades are really good for you because. Cassante has no sustain and you have sustain. Now, they probably just have to back off away for 369. They didn't do it fast enough. Their Baron damage is actually so pissed with that comp. Yeah, their, their, their Baron damage is probably one of the worst you could ever have. Think about it. Akali is maybe the worst Baroning mid laner out of anything that's played. Like, it's comparable with what, like Silas? But even Silas probably does more damage to Baron. Then Akali. Then you have Zin, one of the worst junglers at doing Baron. And Senna, one of the worst AD carries at doing Baron. You actually just have the worst Baron in the entire game. Yeah, they just turn here over the wall. Everyone can get over the wall, except for Jackalove. Keep on hitting it. Look for a engage over the wall. That's it. 369 just run at them like a like an animal. Jackie Good. Love stepping forward, the bear, and apparently is Ooh, not the focus right now. Kind of not, not, not the clean, pit, but they're going in now. All is the focus. And I think that they're fine with this. All out in here, and Cream. He's on the back here. He's by oh, he had vampire. Oh my Jared God, he just one shot vampire, oh, dude. He just one shot the rail. I leave his dead too. Can't move. Actually, they're just turning, I guess. Tough get to play with their food. Turning and going, Baron. This game should have been quicker, right? They made a, they made like one big mistake where Rel got a good engage on them. If not, this game is like 23 minutes, but I feel like this team is going to take a little while to actually become clean at how they want to end games together because they're literally all from different teams, bro. Like only Tien and Jackie Love played together last year. No one else played together. Well, EDG actually got... They denied Soul here. Whatever, just play mid bot Let's end this game. That's the game too. Wasn't 369 on top esports with both of them too? I don't think so, right? Because 369 left to JDG in 2022. He left to JDG in 2022 and he ain't joined in 2022, so no. The logic is you gotta try and shut down one part of the one three one if you can get a kick in the mid lane. But I mean either way, like that it doesn't matter, right? Like just because you played with somebody two years ago doesn't mean anything. Hey, he actually ate the center here. Center gets Oh my god. Oh my god. Take it, take it. Oh wait, he's dead. Look at him. Look at the Uter just standing in front of him. Just tanking him and pressing W in his face. Nice, man. Number one for top esports fans. A 1-0 victory for Mako so far over EDG.
What a stick. I mean, the, the scoreline doesn't look super impressive for the Udyr, but I thought that was probably one of the best Udyr games I've seen in pro play. Like, he just had so much control, like, was essentially solo taking the turret. Just a beast. Okay. Hobby Sports on red side now. Familio Lucian. So, do you, does Jackie Love take the Lucian Nami here? So, so the trade generally is... Milio first pick, Lucian Nami picked into the uh, Milio, and then Aphilios picked into Lucian Nami. And then they and then the Aphilios Milio try to get through the lane where the Lucian Nami are trying to like get a lead. Rumble? Okay, so if you go Rumble, generally it's just Udyr ban is the tech, but it is against Ole, and I don't know if, if Ole plays Udyr. Maybe you just let him play Udyr into Rumble. So, standard pick here would be Udyr Zin, I guess, would be the most standard. I don't think you want to go Rel here, though. I think if you go Rel, you're giga trolling, because you already have uh, magic damage, top, jungle, or sorry, top mid. I think you have to go Zin. Last pick here, I mean, you have options. Normally though, it's it's either Nico or it is or it's um. Oh, actually no, it can't be Nico because you have Rumble. Yeah, I mean Rumble Maokai has to be Trist. I wonder if they could have done to like take the Trist away somehow. Honestly, I would rather play EDG's team comp though. I think EDG has better team comp. I mean they're a much worse team, but I think they have better team comp, easier to play. But still, shame to see them lose most of right, Let's see how Ollie lands it. He's already, you can already tell by where he's standing in the lane that he doesn't know the matchup. You can actually tell by where he's standing in the lane that he doesn't understand. He doesn't know how good his matchup is. Like you saw, saw here, he walked up and he traded. This is a, I can already tell he's going to run it down. <laughs> because you can actually just always deny. So uh, if the rumble does not do two things, you can always deny him melee minions. In order for the rumble right. to even so be able to gain, get the melee minions experience, he needs to run bone plating, and he needs to run the CDR shard to stack his heat level one, so that you can actually fight the Udir back when he runs into your face. If he doesn't do both of those things, then you can just deny him every single time from experience on the first three. And then here he used double R to trade, and then he's using another double R here, where like his look, look at the look at the way that his wave is. Like he can't even like really hit the wave here. Nah, he's he sucks, dude. Here, put me in that game, bro. Put me verse three six nine right now. Really depends on the openings. If you get good information on where JJ is, you can go for things. But you can yeah, he griefed it. So hard for him to play. Like this is why you never want to crash the second wave like he did. Because if you look at the way the minions are, he's just completely crashed wave too soon. Yeah, he crashed wave way too soon. And now he just loses out from this point. Like he's just literally gonna lose out. Period. I'll probably get solo killed. Rick would be disappointed. Trick doesn't play Udir the way I play Udir. He doesn't play like Phoenix Udir most of the time. He's actually got experience disadvantage. And he's not pushing. Yeah, so. I literally did the 1v1 with a uh, with a former LCS player on stream during LEC. I just I played this matchup. I was like, people don't know how to play this matchup, so I did a 1v1 with uh, Kumo, who's currently challenger and former LCS player. We had him play Rumble. I played Udyr, and I just showed you could just deny the experience on the melee minions every time. Doesn't matter if you play for somebody who's even better than you. Like, it's just the matchup. It literally is just just the matchup, unironically. In the recent patch notes, I think 14.2. You know, he's gonna get dove no, here. No, no, no. Uh, he has double W. He's probably dead. Lucian is here on top side as well. Let's see how much they can do with juggling aggro with him. All right. Is he gonna be cooked alive? It looks like so. I like First the Tian ran aftershock this game, by the way. Three, six, I think this is just the tech. Beautiful pocket. Yeah, so, GG. Didn't jump he God, he played this lane so, so disgustingly bad. Bro, I wish I had contact with these players, bro, like the way I do with uh, EU and NA players. Ollie's overrated as fuck. I mean, Ollie's just, he doesn't really pick up like new tank champions very well. It took him a while to actually be able to play Cassante. He's just not that guy who's going to pick up a new champion and just become like, or like a tank champion. I feel like a part of it with Ollie is ego. Like he's just like, oh, bro, this champion is so easy. Now JJ gets to come down towards bot side. These recalls have been right, a long time. What's the response? Vampire take aggro. There's not much they can do. They're gonna get the engage here. TP's now. Wait, JJ Jackie took aggro. Oh, flash out nicely done. Oh, they're getting cooked Because somehow 
Three six nine is TP advantage. How is that possible? No one knows. Three six nine is about to pick up another one. He's letting the angle go for Cream now. Vampire gonna get the reset on. Double jump. Cream wants it, and Cream gets it with the shot. All right. Cream didn't even have to flash there. Yeah, we can forfeit, guys. Can be a flex? It can be a flex. I think it's viable in the jungle. Just in pro play right now. Oh my God, bro! This guy just murdered the entire map. I mean, three six nine is just. He's just too good compared to Ali, I think. We'll play to Ali solo, solo losing, yeah. He is just a much worse player. Fucking Gillies is just messaging me about the Udyr laning phase. He's like, did you see how disgusting that was? He said, I knew you were going to flame him when I saw it. He said, the second that I saw where he was standing level one, I knew you were going to flame him. I mean, because it's just like, you just have to do that in order for, like, your champion is not directly useful the way other champions are directly useful. You have to actually play to the limits of the champion or you're just not going to have value. Uh, it's not like Orin where you can just like show up to a team fight and press R and like boom, there's your value. The composition which you have like, you actually have to abuse the things that are strong about the champion to put yourself in a position where the other guy is just weaker than you. Yeah, he's no ghost. Maybe he's dead. Yeah, he's dead. Wait, this guy has nah. Wait, Ale has Q somehow at level seven. Like we don't even talk about it. I guess he just has Q. I mean. It ended up working there. Nice. He got a shutdown. Uh, cool. Yeah, and he's got so some plates. And he was three at all. He's like, wow, you know, unironically, like he's he's actually pretty close in gold right now after the shutdown. He couldn't push the wave fast enough though. 369 is gonna get a decent amount of this. He gets two plates here. But dude, also, I don't even like taking demolish on Udyr in this matchup. I think Shield Bash actually has value. Actually, what is the the gold is is even. It's it's not really even because 369 is gonna catch this wave. Evening a gold. Literally, they are point point even to each other now. That was not a good flash. Maybe it's okay though. He's tanking the turret there. Does flash out. Pretty clean. I I like the way Cream plays turret dives in general. Like he doesn't panic around turrets. I think it just comes from the fact that he's like a melee assassin player at his core so he's used to diving turrets like you know some laners just they freak out when they're around the turrets you don't see that same like panic from cream when do you skill q level eight generally or 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 level 10 like you you just you do it when you're going to start hitting turrets essentially gold lead itself like that's so useless bro look at that awaken bro he literally used his awaken which is essentially his ult it's a chunk like 30 hp bro how is that ever worth it let's be real it's better and it means that this lane this wave is harder to play down at 10 minutes in the game use double r I mean, double R is mainly used like early, but I think that later on, like, so at this point in the lane, double Q is actually better than double R if you actually get onto them. You'll do more damage with a double Q if they're isolated. Past the wave. Double R is, is good mainly at this point in like team fights. If you are safe and you don't need to use two W's or two E's. He's the responsible adult. One you go to if you trust things. Ooh, Ala. A little spicy one wow. Mm. Able to get some decent damage back, but this is exactly why he wanted the ghost. This is what you pointed out earlier. Mm. Got the angle. You're reported. You're giga a reported, bro. And he runs him you down. are disgustingly he reported. I can't watch it. This is so triggering to watch. That is why you and then I'm going to have to see people You're tweeting about right. how the champion is bad. Yeah, I mean, he uh, like two W's there is really, probably the move, really but I don't even awesome think he wins on those items yet. You know, what, is doing, what is he doing, bro? Actually, what is he doing? Yeah, I mean, if he double W's, he actually wins. Still, I think he just or he can force all. Uh, he can force at least 369 to run. He at least does not die. I mean, the one thing I will say about Ollie this game, at least his build is good. At least he's going Rooker into Frozen Heart. Really like what Tian's doing here. This is a very common thing you do. As sure, man. We'll take it. Well, if they someone's rooted up by the Maokai, all things go. Yeah, they go south. And that guy is dead. Oh, like this. Why were we even here? Right, Mako must have just no one knows. Head. He's like, the last game of LCS. To go better, better for the TT series. Nah, bro. I'll, I'll finish LCS today. LCS is short enough, I think, in general. Just sit through it. Oh my god, they're all getting cooked. Three, four man Nami wave. Rumble ult is hitting them all. Cream just dove into the fing backline and just inted super hard. He ran it the f down there. And the Ocean Drake just, just slowed leave and got him killed. Excellent, man. Holy f 
cream into that fight. Just run at these guys. Dude, I really respect the aftershock Maokai though. Like, I was talking about this. People are saying you have to go phase rush every game. I just don't agree. This is the best Uter performance in pro. The 369 Uter game right before this was like pretty and solid. Keen's Udyr is also good. Zeus's Udyr is, is good as well. I'd say those are probably the three best that I've seen. AJ is so bad. I mean, both these guys are in my book. World Finals MVPs. Yeah, there's the Baron start. They have no uh, Maokai ult, no Nami ult, no Lucian ult, Rumble ult. So just base here. Probably play mid bot out of base. Play mid bot out of base and win the game. Easy. To show he still has the ability to play that competitively, we always knew he could. But can he do it now in this fight? He has to teleport in. Jackie Love getting in there now. Oh, they did the combo there. Right back in. Jackie All right. The one that gets taken Low key out. winnable. But big Papa three six nine has come to the party, and he's look at this Udir that like played terribly. Is actually just standing on Cream's he's face, and Cream can't do anything this about is it. The problem with the double marksman combo. Until other people help. There's always a snake ready to bite. Three, Just you, you need one. to actually play your lane down, better than this. I mean, his build is fine. You just need to play lane better. All right, they went mid bot. Now they reset, go top is like four, I guess, four slash five, and then you win. I mean, this is this is kind of how it's going to look for Ali, bro. If, if he doesn't learn more champions or if his champions don't end up getting buffed in future patches, it's just going to be a ban Jax angle. Let's see what you can do. So far, it looks like you ban Jax against this guy and uh, they stole soul here, but they're going to lose the fight, I think. Moonlight Vigil goes wide. JJ gives his life to top esports. I think they gladly give one dragon over to take multiple That was not the shockwave. EDG, as he's popped the and he's Cream just again. killed the other two. The flame uh, ending the game. Tactic by three, six, nine. GG. Cream just jumps on the bot lane off screen. That was a and quick series, bro. Absolutely murders them. Cream doing his own stunts of the rest of his team. Keep that was a quick fleeing three, roll. EDG what? busy. Hour and a half long series. Sure that Mako gets good old revenge against his old org, and at least making a statement here for Top Esports to They're playing for the kill, man. Really? One-one series scoreline. Insult. The three-six-nine takes the kill. One more time. Jackie is not going to be happy about that one.